Okay, now we're recording. This is a Disability Access Advisory Committee meeting for well, June 2022, beginning at, I don't know what time exactly, 1150 something on um, June 14th. And somebody, I'm hearing something from somebody's computer about a cash reward. <laughs> <laughs> we'll all take. We'll all take that. I don't know, but it went away. Okay, I, I got distracted. Um, okay, um, so this is a rather short agenda. We have a few announcements at the beginning. I don't know if we have anyone from the public. I don't think we do. Uh, no, we do. Uh, we, uh, we do. I believe Tracy is in attendance. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, Tracy. Um, do you have any comments to make or should we, are you just listening? Oh, oh so um, Myra, so um, let's see here. We had spoken on the phone. Right. Yeah, and I had to talk to Tracy about it. I forgot to talk to her. Yeah, her so let's see here. Her hand so, is raised. So would, um, so Tracy Zafian, is a member of the public and she's also the chairperson of the uh, town's transportation advisory committee meeting. Would the board like to make Tracy Zafian a panelist? Um, Sometimes I go to their meetings and they've made me a panelist. Oh, okay. Just because right. it's easier to yeah. interact that way. And um, she's a head of a board that we wanna have some connection with. So it seems logical. For her Agreed. not to be a privileged person from the community, she's actually a town board head. Okay, um, sure. So I can make her a panelist. Good. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, I actually don't have very many comments. There were a couple items on the agenda. I, and I have another meeting at one. Yeah, well, we do too. Oh, so. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, though this will be quick. So Maureen sent out announcements about the June 27 second listening session for the um, age and dementia friendly community. Um, and I went to the last one but I couldn't stay for the whole thing. Um, it was pretty interesting. People had good things to say. They put us in breakout rooms. We talked about last time it was all about, uh, what was it about? Shows you where my brain is. Anyway, this one is, talk, tell us Maureen what this one's about. Yes, yeah, so I'm assisting uh, senior services with a year long project, it's called the Age and Dementia Friendly uh, Community Project. And we hope to make uh, Amherst a des um, designated age and dementia friendly community. And um, part of this project will be hosting um, several listening sessions on various topics that, um, that uh, will engage seniors and care caregivers. Uh, and um, this uh, information and feedback that we received from seniors will be incorporated in the final plan uh, as part of this project. Um, so the next listening session is on social participation and inclusion, communication and technology and civic engagement. And um, it'll, it's I'm scheduled sure from 2.30 <laughs> <laughs> to four on Monday, June 27th uh, via Zoom. And um, you can find the meeting, um, posting on the town calendar um, and it has um, all the information. Um, you do need to register for the meeting. Um, there, there was a link provided to you all in the e in an email I sent out last week um, that is promoting the listening session. And, um, and then you can also find that link on the town calendar. And um, we include a flyer that's in English and also in Spanish that helps um, promote the flyer. And we, we're, um, uh, reaching out to various organizations um, and town boards and departments to help promote this event. Um, and so we're, we hope to have speakers um, or consultant, uh, Becky Bish, who's a planner with Pioneer 
Pioneer Valley Planning Commission will be speaking, giving a presentation. And we've asked uh, Jen Moisen, our assistant director uh, to the Office on Disability, Equity, and Inclusion to speak about uh, what, um, what the town is doing to engage all members of our public. And we've asked uh, Brianna um, from our IT department to talk about um, how uh, we're using communicate, how we communicate and use technology um, to um, engage with um, members of our public. And then we'll um, have a, like a breakout session. Um, so we'll give a presentation, a couple of presentations. And then um, we want to hear from seniors and caregivers uh, about their thoughts and you know, pros and cons and, and what, what uh, opportunities um, could be, um, um, be given to, uh, to be more inclusive. So yeah, so um, I, and also I think the link is on our agenda. So if you want to just go to our meeting agenda, you can find out more information um, on our agenda. And then the second item on the, for under announcements is, um, so Amherst is, uh, has selected its first director of diversity, equity, inclusion. Um, this might be slightly outdated information and maybe Pat can fill us in. So uh, the town manager appointed Pamela Nolan Young as the town's first director, subject to review by the town council. Um, the town manager referred this appointment to the town council for approval in accordance with the Amherst Home Charter rule. Um, Ms. Young is expected to start her role with the town on July 1st. And um, Pat, did the town council approve her? Yes, we did. Okay, yes, yeah. great. And you can um, read more about um, Pamela's or Miss Young's background and professional experience in the link provided on the meeting today's meeting agenda. It's um, linked to our town website. Um, and as the town manager had indicated in an email sent to Myra, feels like good a good few months ago. Um, uh, like December. Yeah, December. Yeah. So, um, uh, you know, uh, the Office on Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion um, will capture, um, you know, accessibility. And so we, we hope to invite Ms. Young to one of our upcoming meetings um, to see, how, you know, what, what does that entail? Um, but first, let her, let let us let her get settled with the town. So, um, um, and, I was thinking September or October. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Um, I'm sure it'll take her a couple of months just to sort of get lay of the land, and um, so we we can um, certainly invite her. And then hopefully by September or October, we'll have a better understanding. What does this new sort of relationship with that department mean for the? for this committee. So yeah, so let me write that down. So September or September or October, um, have her attend a meeting. Okay. okay. Anybody have any ideas about that? Does that sound all right with anyone, with everyone? Fine. Yes. Fine. Okay. <clears throat> okay. I have a question. Yep. N not in relation to this, but I wasn't at the um, architectural access meeting that you guys had for for the variance i was just curious what happened with that oh um when? that was for the park well the okay, emergency that was shelter for the emergency yeah. shelter yeah for next park. to the park yeah um it turns out that the entire uh amethyst brook really isn't accessible at all um and the piece of property that has this building on it is on the edge of a farm that's a working farm. And the farmer said that the length of ramp that would be required to make the emergency shelter accessible when the entire program isn't going to be accessible. Um, the, the farmer said that it would take up a lot of space that he uses um, for his farm. And uh, although I don't think any of us was 
thrilled about them having a program that isn't accessible. They were able to show us that they actually have quite a few programs that are accessible, but not at that site. Um, and so given that the program has fewer than 10 kids in it at a time, uh, I think the vote was Saren abstained. Um, I think the rest of us voted to do it. Although we told him that we weren't wild about having programs that weren't accessible. Um, but it didn't seem to be any reason to not approve it because the entire program isn't accessible even without the emergency shelter. So if you've ever gone into Amethyst Brook, it needs a lot of work to be accessible. Okay. All so right. does, that, does that answer the question? Does anybody yes, want to? Thank Anybody you. want to define it in a different way? I, I think um, Marty had, um, you know, pointed out the sort of financial burden on the applicant. Um, yeah. You know, building that yeah. shed is, I forget, you know, how much, but, uh, you know, lowering the shed to the ground level or installing a ra ramp particularly would cost like, you know, at least $10,000 yeah. for, um a very small shed and yep. you know what that seems like a financial burden to to this uh, that nonprofit. um and so Especially yeah so i did for your comments away i mean the farmer what? wasn't it was going to get in the way of the farm right to have that hmm. ramp there yeah. okay i just i was curious what happened yeah and yeah tracy has her hand up okay yep. thank yep. you pat um, hi, so I had a question just about the age friendly um, listening sessions. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I had, I had listened to the recording of some of the earlier meetings and I seen that transportation was tentatively there was a listening session planned related to transportation for July 25th. Is that still the right date or is that not confirmed? I can, uh, if you shoot me an email, I can let you know. I, I don't, I wasn't okay. prepared to have that information today. Oh, I just, because it was about transportation. So I know I had shared it. I, because at some point, like that whole, the whole schedule of all the listening sessions was sort of mapped out. So I yeah. just wasn't sure if they were confirmed, but sure. I'm happy to send you. They have been confirmed. I, I just don't okay. have that particular yeah, no. information okay. in front of me. Um, and I guess one other thing is that um, I know that the committee and as part of this effort, right, it's interested in listening to both um, caregivers and seniors. So what if what if an Amherst resident is a caregiver, but the person that they're caring for like doesn't necessarily live in Amherst? So is it the idea to support caregivers, like even if they're supporting somebody who lives in Hadley or Sunderland? Or sure, yeah, it's, it's whatever, you know, yeah. I, I, I think we're a welcoming, inclusive group, so. Okay. Um, we, we, we're not, there's no, you know, hard and fast regulation on it. Thanks, I was just curious, thanks. In fact, one of the people in my group uh, last time uh, had been a professional in Amherst for years and years and was on the Council, and Council on Aging for many years, didn't live in Amherst. And then they decided that you had to live in Amherst. So they kicked her off the Council of Ag on Aging. Um, but, um, you know, so, I think it used to be a little more open than it might be now, but. Well, I was talking about the working group for this uh, town project that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I just oh. meant the listening sessions because there was somebody I had reached out to and they're like, well, are you a caregiver? You know, they were very like, why do you think you can even whatever? So, but I just, I mean, a lot of people, you know, are a lot of people in their even thirties, forties, fifties are like caregivers for either parents or grandparents or whatever. I mean, there's a lot of caregiving that goes on all around. And sometimes caregivers need support and the people that they are caregiving for need more support too, so. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. No, and that's, well, no and that's been kick expressed. No one's gonna you out if you go. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. been uh, expressed in in um, in a variety of these meetings as part of the Age and, age and Dementia Friendly Project is um, how can we be more supportive of caregivers and you know it's it's definitely an underrated um, 
and uh, underappreciated uh, yet very important role that you know family members or you know professionals um, provide. Um, and so, um, so that is definitely a, a big aspect of this project as well. Okay, um, new business. I actually have some. Ruth, Ruth yeah. has a question. I, oh, just, just a quick comment. Oh. I know the Amherst Senior Center used to have a discussion group for caregivers. I, I don't know if they still do, but um, mm. you know anybody from any of the surrounding communities, Hadley, Holyoke, could come to that. So, so uh, you know that's the model right there. Uh, yep. That support good. group. Good to know. Yeah, good to know. Thank you, Ruth. Good. Yeah. So I wrote to Mindy Dom um, as an advocate for increased funding for the regional transit authorities throughout the state. They had proposed an increase. They didn't get it either from the Senate or from the House. There is a little bit of extra money in the Senate version to support uh, people to defer those costs to defer costs of regional transit. That was very unclear what it meant. But for example, in the Worcester regional transit in the ADA service there, they, don't, they haven't been charging people in the pandemic. In ours, we've always been charged. I think the Springfield regular, um, the, the fixed route service stopped charging people for a while. I don't know if they are again, but we've always been charged. So there isn't any um, kind of uniformity about it, but there is a little extra money in the Senate version. So I wrote to our state representatives and state senator to ask them to vote for the version or to tell their conferees to vote for the version that has the most money. And Mindy Dom wrote back that she had met uh, with a group of people from Northampton she described them as activists, disability activists, and they want to work on issues of access to businesses in Amherst. I don't know what that's about. She said she wasn't, uh, she wanted to know if we wanted to meet with them or talk to them. And I said, sure. She said she didn't want to step on anybody's toes. So I'm waiting to find out who these people are and how she wants to, or how they want to go about having this joint meeting or having them come to one of our meetings. It's not clear, but apparently she doesn't even represent Northampton. So it's not clear to me why she's involved in this at all. Um, so uh, I don't know what it's about, but I'm in dialogue with her. So something will be coming. And I don't know if any of you would know about any people who would be concerned about access to businesses for people from other towns. I haven't heard of anything like that. Okay. Doesn't mean they're not out there. Right. I, I have a feeling. Uh, so you remember the the rally in Northampton for disability rights? Yeah. I yeah. my gut tells me that this group of individuals that Mindy's working with might be the, those that organized that rally. Um, Cause I know that that was something that was talked about a lot during the speeches at the rally was how do you provide, um, you know, how do you work with the restaurants in Northampton to, to ensure that they're accessible? Yeah. Okay. Including the snow in winter time, so. Yeah, so, you know, you can certainly um, with the- I think it's a good idea for us to find out more about it. I mean, if there's safety yeah. in numbers, Right, we'd be happy to yeah. advocate for them too. But it's still confusing to me because Mindy doesn't represent Northampton or yeah. Hadley. So um, she only represents Amherst and one part, maybe a third to a half of Granby. And Pelham. So, yeah. No. Nope, so maybe it would be nice to uh, have her. Uh, oh, she um, does now. She will. She will not represent Pelham in the next election, but she does right now. You're right. Northampton. They took it away from her. So would uh, the committee members won't be, um, would you all entertain the idea of if, you know, Mindy suggests that those individuals wanted to meet with you all, would you want to invite them to a, like an upcoming meeting? 
Yeah. Um, I mean, many, many of us go to Northampton for uh, other activities as well. So it really makes sense to me that we yes. we're, we're having dialogue with them yeah. about their thinking yeah. and what their plans are, et cetera. Agreed. Yeah. Are these people involved with the committee they have maybe? I don't know. I, I don't know. I will pursue it further. I'll try to find out who they are and yeah. um, what they're particularly interested in. Because I don't want us to be blindsided and look like we don't know what's going on. But at the same time, there might be people who've had incidents with our um, business people that we don't know about and that we wouldn't have a way to know about. Right. So, you know, it's important for us, I think, in many ways to yes. all work together. Right. Um, <laughs> and I just, you know, it was, a, it was a request that I thought I'd bring to you and I'll tell her that we'd be happy to meet with them. But I want to know more about it because, as I said, they have their own state rep and they right. that's not who contacted me. Um, so, okay, so then we have a lot of updates on projects. Um, I don't think, do you want to quickly go through them, Maureen? Uh, them, sure, very cool. If there's quickly. anything different from what yeah, we had there my, I don't, um, I, I listed uh, you know, a bunch of projects. Um, some don't have updates, but I, I included them just so we don't forget <laughs> um, for future reference. Um, so the first one is, uh, you know, the town, we received a grant through the Mass Office on Disability, um, and it's to um, deal with architectural barriers re relative to the front door of the Bang Center. Um, and so um, that work, um, sorry, just bear with me, that uh, work is to replace uh, the broken automatic door control and, and associated door and provide a ADA compliant level landing at, at the automatic door and, um, and uh, to install a sign that designates that entrance as accessible um, and to um, provide an ADA compliant clear floor uh, space um, at, the, at the door as well. So basically, uh, in a nutshell, is to help make the door entrance ADA um, compliant. Um, right. And so that work needs to be done by the end of this month. Um, and so there- Don't they need to regrade outside too? Yeah, yep. So they're gonna do some regrading slightly um, at the, at the um, entrance, at the doorway. Um, so, uh, and have it um, um, meet the sidewalk at, the, at, that, um, at that existing grade. Um, so work should be starting today or this week and, um, and we uh, need it completed and invoices sent back to the state by the end of this month. And we hope to achieve that deadline. And um, the Amity Street Sidewalk Improvement Project it appears to be completed. I am um, not, um, maybe yeah. Tracy could provide an update on that. Um, the one, oh, and at least, I mean, okay. go ahead. I've walked it and it's great. It's, um, you know, I saw a sign that said Lincoln Street and it's it's a little bit past that, that they've completed. Yeah, they did and it it's good. Oh, that's great to hear, Elise. Thank and you. And also, I'm happy to report that, that you know, our Amherst Coffee, we had that problem last summer mm -hmm. with, with the, the barricading yeah. the sidewalk. They, they did that little parklet, I guess you call it, or whatever. Yep. They fixed it so that, you know, the, the seating is on the street now. It, they fixed it. Oh, great. Do you like and, it? Yeah. I can, you know, you can use the sidewalk. Um, yeah. They did. They did what they were supposed. What, what we wanted them to do. So, cool. yay! <laughs> yeah, good. At least the squeaky wheel gets oil. Yeah, agreed. It, well, it, keep yeah. Yeah. Good, at I, least. I appreciate that Amherst Coffee isn't roping off their walkway anymore. Yeah, which I always was really not happy with. Um, I do have a quick, I mean, the Amity, it looks great on both sides. And at least I know this might be of interest to you, but I've been in touch with the property owner mm -hmm. on the south side of between um, like North of Dana, whatever that is, between like Lincoln and Dana. Sorry. Yeah, oh, that's so bad. There. And so where that, well, first of all, there's like that little break in the sidewalk and it's sort of steep, but then also this one owner like had the bushes be completely overgrown. 
oh, and I know that owner and mm -hmm. um and he said well there's nothing I can do and I was like oh, well, come on. and if oh, you actually brother. even take a picture you can see that there's all this new growth and currently it's going almost like a third to a half of the sidewalk yeah my head and, I walk and, by it. and he said that if he said like he was told by you know guardian person if he cut it back it would never grow Ooh. again and i said well what did the old owners do he's a pretty new owner there he used uh -huh. to live on south pleasant and anyway i just lent him my electric hedge clipper so hopefully he'll do something <laughs> Thank um <you. laughs> because i i'm annoyed too <laughs> um i did have a question just about the the steeper parts of amity and so yeah. one thing i've heard repeatedly and it's come up at tack meetings too is there are some sections of that steeper section of Amity between, you know, um, up to Dana, like Lincoln and Dana. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I yeah. think, you know, I think it even gets to like seven, eight percent grade. It's definitely not ADA. Uh -huh. compliant. But then one thing mm -hmm. I've heard and it's come up at the TAC meetings, too. This is just a general question comment is that um, so what we've been told is that, well, there's nothing we can do to fix that sidewalk you know, uh -huh. on that steeper section because it can never be like at ADA compliant grade. And so I was just wondering, wow. I mean, what do we do in what happens in communities that have hills? And so Can't they just obviously it out? I just, I don't know. Well, that's in fact just a much bigger question. No so because he said that he can't fix, he can't put in a sidewalk on the west side of Kellogg up by Triangle Street for the same reason. Right, Maureen, oh. isn't that what he said? Um, I, I can't. Either, I can't recall his reasoning. Um, somebody said that it was impossible to put a sidewalk on that yes. part of Kellogg where there isn't one. Guilford has um, said that in public meetings. Yeah, that's true. But it is not impossible to put a sidewalk where there no. isn't one. You just have to be a little creative with your machines to grade it and well, make it, a sidewalk. But I guess that's the question. In like, I mean, in terms of the ADA, and um, somebody I'm sure knows way more than me, but it seems like. People, you know, if there were these facilities on hills that you should still be able to fix, that, you know, it's like, yep. I mean, you're never going to make, you're never going to be able to make the hill go away, but it, um, could it should still... be able to smooth it out. So that yeah, Marty just, has her hand up. Yep. Thank you, Pat. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so the way yeah. that <clears throat> 521 CMR reads and the ADA reads is that sidewalks and a sidewalk is defined as a walkway that is parallel and adjacent to a roadway. Those are not required to meet the slope requirements, either side to side or lengthwise. And the reason is because in order to do it, to make it accessible, you would have to end up regrading the entire road and you may still not be able to do it. So then you end up having to build switchbacks in order to get a, a legal ramp up that. So that's why those sidewalks are exempt. And the reason for not having one in Kellogg, on Kellogg doesn't make any sense to me. No, it doesn't. Because it may not comply, right. but you can still build it because it is an adjacent sidewalk to a road. Right. Next to a busy street. Yes. Right. And it would make sense that you would go ahead and do that, even though it's not accessible. But there is a perception in town, and I've run into it in, on my driveway, that, that every sidewalk has to be accessible. And that's actually not true. OK, um, good to know. Yeah. It's yeah, just, I mean, topo topographically, what you're saying is totally logical. Yeah, I mean, you'd end yeah. up having to, <laughs> to carve down a lot of things that it, you can't really do. Would it be, uh, I would want to have the code in front of me um, so we can cite it. Um, I, I, certain, I, I certainly believe you, Marty. Um, yeah, no, I, and, I, I've, and I've read that and all that. Would it be helpful at maybe at a future meeting um, to consider um, maybe... Um, writing a memo about about this um because i do feel like there might be some fear of like um from folks that they don't want to upset you or like do something wrong and so then 
they're so concerned of doing something wrong that they decide, well, let's just not do anything because they're so scared. <laughs> and so to hear this kind of feedback that, you know, you would be okay with, you know, if, if the town were to ever put in a sidewalk along Kellogg Ave, like, sure, if you could make it ADA compliant, but, you know, due to section blah, 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 um, you know, you're exempt from meeting that code. It, um, and so it, it gives them- Sorry, uh, I have it right here. Oh, great, yep. It's uh, CMR 521, section 22. And the exception is specifically 22.3.1. 22 22 22.3.1. Okay, oh, thank you. Yeah. Well, so I guess now that we have the section cited, um, I, I don't, uh, we you could all can think about that, but just uh, as a friendly sort of gesture, um, I, it's like I don't know if that is needed, but um, but just to point out, like you know, um, you guys acknowledge that um, you know if 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 um, you know it's it's impractical to make a sidewalk. ADA compliant, you know, there are exemptions under under the code that allows that and that you would want to still see connections, pedestrian connections um, through town when, you know, whenever possible. So this is a perfect um, opportunity for the transportation committee and us, because I think you're working on sidewalks, right, Tracy, you're We do work on about... sidewalks sometimes. Yeah. I mean, okay. well, and I've been doing stuff with safe routes to school about sidewalks, but I well, think it would be really helpful. Quite frankly, have, there is a school right across the baseball field from, from there. It, so. it would be really helpful to um, like have clarification and if the committee, right, if your committee writes a memo to clarify, because I mean, we really do here. And I mean, in the case of Amity where you have tree roots and you have cracks in the sidewalk, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously it would be safer even at the grade it's at, if it, those were fixed. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I just don't want right. that to, yeah, it just, so thanks. Right, yeah, and yeah, so sidewalks are a major problem in this town. I think they are in lots of places, but they are really in this town because they haven't been maintained at all. I've lived in this neighborhood for 42 years. They haven't repaired a sidewalk here since I live here. And <laughs> it's really quite astounding. Um, so I think they're, a, they're about to do a little bit of sidewalk work on Taylor Street, um, but there's so much more. And, you know, I don't need, that doesn't even begin to cover it. So um, I think it's important for our two committees to work together, especially when, you know, the middle school is pretty adjacent to High Street where there are pretty terrible sidewalks and the high school is across the baseball field from Kellogg where there are no sidewalks. I don't know. Anyway, um, so uh, other than that, it seems like everything else. Oh, I have a question about the bank center, Maureen, jumping back to your other topic. Does the elevator work well in there? Uh, I believe it does. Um, it did. Uh, yeah, I believe okay. it does. Uh, I okay. personally haven't used it, and um, if memory serves, yeah, I don't the, use it. The bank. So I don't know. The uh, ADA plan for the bank center, um, I believe, d didn't call it out being as like a non ADA okay. compliant. Okay, because that have, building has so many levels, and making one entrance accessible is great, but the other entrance on the other side is almost more convenient for people going to the senior center. So. I don't, that one is accessible, right? That one is, right. so the south yeah. door, um, yeah. which is near yes. um, Johnny's restaurant, right. yeah. that it, there is a automatic yeah. um, door opener control. Right. Well, there was on the front door too, but it doesn't work. So. Yeah, unfortunately yeah. It, it broke recently and that's yeah. why we applied for this grant. Yeah. That's one of the reasons. Okay, I just wanted to make sure because that's a funny building. It's so it is a, It's a very funny yeah. building. <laughs> okay, yeah. all right. Um, so the other ones, um, the uh you said you didn't have any further comments yeah on, uh let's see here so the Roy. downtown bar, uh, parklets the, those have been installed and those are um so one is installed in front of amherst coffee and it's great to hear from elise that 
that you like uh, the layout and that it's not blocking the sidewalk down. So now you can just freely use the sidewalk as a pedestrian pathway. And then the other parklet is located in front of um, Fresh Side, which is on, let's see here, um, South, Look, Pleasant, South Pleasant Street. Yeah, South yeah. Pleasant Street. Next and so, yep, exactly. And so both parklets are ADA compliant and yeah. there is a threshold connecting the parklet to the sidewalk. So it's a nice, easy, um, you know, um, threshold in, into, into and out of the parklet and, um, cool. Yeah, and they look aesthetically pleasing. It looks like people are using them and really yeah. enjoying them. So, uh, the fresh side um, also has tables in front on the sidewalk in front of the restaurant as well. They do. So they did ask yeah. for that as well, and um, so it's not. It's it's kind of narrow. And Amherst, I, Co Amherst Coffee still has their ones next to yeah. their like building yep. too yeah so it goes from building wall then um yeah a, a sort of lane uh then um uh, seating and then there's a there is a, a pedestrian pathway and then the parklet um so it does meet code for the width of a sidewalk um okay. i originally didn't know i didn't i wasn't aware that they were still going to maintain tables and chairs on the sidewalk itself. Um, but they did request that um, huh. to the town. Tori um, or Saren, have you tried to get through there? Have you had any trouble? I haven't gotten a chance to go and test it though. Okay. No, no, I, haven't been, no. yeah. I haven't been I haven't been downtown okay. lately. Okay. Well go check it out. <laughs> how, how long is that part? How long we have a the... budget, Tori. You can get yourself a cup of coffee. <laughs> check it out. <laughs> I, I had a question is how long are the parklets intended to stay installed? Uh, so the town manager approved them as temporary uses. So um, they should be removed um, this fall. Of course, maybe that could change. I don't know. Maybe maybe um, the businesses would want them to stay up a little longer. I'm, I'm not too sure on that, but that, that as of right now, they're considered temporary uses. Okay. I imagine they'll right. be removed before we have snow because right. they're really <laughs> impossible to plow around. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. And they're actually okay. built modularly so they can be removed, stored, and put back. Okay. Yep. Oh, good. Yeah. They can be cool. reused year after year. They're quite well built. I watched them build the one for Fresh Side. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's great. Yeah. That's great. Okay. Um, are there any other? I saw there's no update for Pomeroy, so I assume I don't have an that, update. I don't know yeah. if anyone else has an update. Uh, I just had a well, it's a comment about Pomeroy actually. I mean, if you go back to when the original time frame, you know that it was actually supposed to, I think, be constructed by now. But and Guilford had brought up at a TAC meeting that, I mean, I thought it was supposed to be by like March or something. Like that's definitely on there. One of their priority projects. I mean, I think they actually need to. The town needs to. to go the town to needs now. to spend the money, you know, within a yep. certain amount of time. Like it's not mm. infinite. Yep. Um, so, I thought they were supposed to be going out to bid now. I, I'm, Do you know Pat? No, I don't. But I can find out. Okay. And email you. Okay. Well, it seems like all the all that's, you know, they did, they did the best they could, um, given that they're building roundabout. So, um, I I think it's um, you know it's just time for them to, to do Get it. Get going. And yeah, <laughs> right. yeah. No. Um, so I don't know that we have anything else that we have to have any opinion on. Do we? I have a question. Oh, go for hey, it. What about uh, the both would walk project? Where is it at now? Boat would walk, boat would walk. Um, they, I mean, if they were going to uh, get rid of the parking lot the parking? from the town hall and make oh, one, that one. one away street. And we were thinking of the parking places for vans. They call it the North Common. Yeah. Wasn't that put on yeah. hold? Correct. Yeah, so good question, Saren, but... Um, the town is looking for to secure more funding for that project. 
And so um, it's been put on hold until we can secure more funding. So because we raised some concerns, you know, important concerns. Correct. Yep. They Pat, talked you about know they, yeah, tell us. Yeah, they talked about it some last night and that the suggestions from this group, I believe, have been incorporated into uh, the design. The design, uh, I'm not sure if all of them I can uh, have been, but that's what was stated last night. And uh, the cost of the project has skyrocketed because of construction costs. And they've I, I don't have my notes here, but they've received two grants. Uh, to move ahead with that project. Okay. So there is no discussion on the board before it's even designed uh, to revisit taking away the parking or partial parking lot. It's all going to be grass except the perimeter. Uh, yeah, as like, far as I know, yes. Yeah. Okay. So nobody's revisiting that. Okay. All right. Um, I think that might be it. That's everything, I think. Yeah, that might be it. Okay. So the next meeting we would have normally would be July 12th. And the question is, do we want to have a meeting if we just have updates? Um, or do we want to take a summer vacation and skip till August? I don't know how anybody um, feels about it. I'm taking the first two weeks in August, so I, I will ah, not okay. be here for... The Same August here, meeting. actually. <laughs> well, yeah, maybe like we should have a July meeting and not an August meeting. We could do that. I'm sorry. Unless, unless we get... have some kind of a proposal that we have to do something about, but we never know about those till the last minute anyway. Right, Maureen? They never give you a lot of Yeah, notice. true. That is a very true. Well, let's, um, what if, so we would, we would be meeting July 12th. Um, yes. Do folks want to put that in the books? Yeah, we can do July 12th <laughs> yeah, and we can right. plan to not meet in August unless some reason comes up that we need to. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah. sounds good. Okay. Well, in have July. a lovely June. Oh, by the way, there's no more taste of Amherst. Is that right? Oh, really? I don't not know. Not this year. Just not oh. this year. I don't know. Uh, Tracy Kevin. raised her hand. Yeah. Oh, um, okay. I had a question about the East Pleasant Street. The project near the Kendrick and things um is there are the um, the rapid rectangular flashing beacons and those crosswalk I mean is do does the town have those yet or has the town decided where to put those flashing lights that's a good question for Guilford uh, okay. I do I do believe that the equipment to um, install the the flashing beacons have arrived um i i but yeah your questions are really geared to DPW. no that's fine yeah well um yeah i've been thinking about it just with the safety of some of the crosswalks and um particularly i've been working on some safe routes to school stuff and like assessing all the schools um i was down at crocker this morning but to me it seems really hazardous that at the crosswalk the intersection of East Pleasant and Strong Street which is not that far but that there's only a crosswalk there there's no like flashing lights or anything no, there's nothing there. and so like if any students don't, are trying to cross or anybody but if particularly for students if you're trying to cross and it's not in that little window that the crossing guard is present it's a lot it's a lot harder so, I mean, some of the discussion with the schools, you know, has been like that Wildwood is so much more walkable than Fort River. But every time I think about that one unsignalized intersection with nothing, I, I have concerns about it. Um, I don't think it's a DAAC issue, but it's a good issue. Yeah. Living uh, Elise both. has raised her hand. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, you're muted, Elise. Where is she? Oh. Um. Oh, here we go. Here Sorry. You go. Yep. Um, there's actually construction going on near my building. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's been happening. Um, I have one more sidewalk comment, and I don't think it's been addressed, but I just want to mention that the I know there's a bus stop on the side on the um, Amherst Common, and the sidewalk leading up to that is pretty treacherous. Just to throw that out there. Where's so, this? I'm sorry. You, I was 
typing Did, something. Say that one more time. Which street? Um, I don't know the street on name. Main but street or on South Pleasant Street? Ah, uh, I don't know the street name. I just know it's right next to the common. It's like where the farmer's market happens. So that's the one on South Pleasant Street. Yeah. That's right, that, that's right next to Spring Street. Yeah, there's a bus stop. Um, mm -hmm. the bus, some of the buses stop. Um, you know, it's near where that little yellow building used to be. Yep. 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 Um, the sidewalk is pretty horrible. Oh, sure. It. Yep. So I just wanted to throw that out there. That really could use a fix up. Yeah, and I think that's something that the town hopes to incorporate as part of a part of the oh, the, the North Common, the North oh, okay. com, uh, the okay, North part sense. of the town Common project is yeah, to yeah. Um, uh, replace the that stretch of the sidewalk along South Pleasant Street and the Common. Yeah, okay. it, and I yeah I think we all agree that it needs some love and care. Yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. I just wanted, Tracy, you know. your question about Strong Street is a good one. There's probably not great visibility there either, um, but it's not a DAAC issue. Okay, I didn't, I mean, just in terms of accessibility, I understand. Um, yeah. And just, just to let you know too, that the TAC, I'm still really interested in the question about like snow access, like we talked about that a little bit and mm -hmm. now it's summer, but before we know it, there'll be snow back. Um, so yeah. I am in touch with Walk Boston about it. I'm hoping that a Walk Boston person will come to, one of the TAC meetings, but maybe it could be a combined meeting. Well, whatever, maybe okay. we can figure something out. Um, All right. Well, and maybe actually, we can get that um, Pamela <coughs> Nolan Young meeting. Uh, um, maybe we can talk to her about how that's uh, that's actually an issue of inclusion. Yeah, I, we, I mean, we I haven't gotten anywhere with her with disability access, but maybe if she makes it an issue of inclusion, she can get somewhere. I mean, and that's where too, I had mentioned at one of our meetings that I had reached out to Earl Miller, just because when people don't shovel their sidewalks or have their cars blocking the sidewalks that I don't always want to call the police dispatch line, right? So, yeah. and Earl yeah, was really receptive topic. on that. Um, but I, I'll just yeah. mention too, um, just I had gotten, for some reason I was in some of my archives <laughs> over the weekend and I have letters. I have a letter from 2003 where I had written the town and it was a letter to the editor to the bulletin too, asking for better snow shoveling because mm -hmm. there had been people coming to the select board asking for better snow shoveling, including one of my elderly neighbors. And then I also found the letter about requesting that the walk and don't walk signals be repaired. And this is from 2001 to the DPW mm -hmm. that director well, then who was not Guilford. That we, these are long term things. No, that they don't happen. That's <laughs> because, what I'm saying. And Guilford <laughs> was like, here at that no, time. In 2001, he wasn't here yes, yet. He was here in 2002. Yeah, well, so this is 2001. <laughs> but yeah. I, had, I documented all the broken signals and I sent it to DPW. Yep. So, well, so there we go. <laughs> So progress is next slowly. next generation or something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Everybody, July 12th, same time. Well, not Thank same you, time. Everyone. Same place. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Bye-bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.